our first virtual access open day. So today we are here to talk about all things access and this is our access program interactive open session and um, it's a really great opportunity for you guys watching i know that there's about 20 of you there for to ask any questions we are going to have a really interactive chat it's going to be an amazing opportunity to get any questions that you might have answered and um, we are joined by various different members and we're going to have a panel discussion in a couple of minutes but to kick off this event we are actually going to hear from our assistant registrar francis who is going to give us a little bit of a welcome and then we'll come back to you after that video Good afternoon everybody and I'd like to welcome you to the access information session on behalf of the Institute. Uh, I hope that you will find this information session very valuable for you. The whole purpose of the access programme in Athlone Institute of Technology is to introduce you to a range of subjects that potentially you may study in the future. Interestingly though we also supply the, the students with other skills when you're completing this programme. That includes study skills, time management skills, career planning skills. So I hope you'll find those very valuable. Um, as the Registrar and Vice President for Academic Affairs, it is absolutely vital for us that you understand that you are necessary to be part of our community in Athlone Institute of Technology and into our TU into the future as well. Um, this year we have 17 students who've done the access programme that have progressed onto other programmes. Overall, we have 45 students who completed the access programme who are now completing their degrees up to master's level. So there's a direct contribution between this programme and your advancement into further and higher education. So I really hope that you enjoyed the session uh, and I look forward to seeing you as students. Uh, in AIT. Welcome from Frances who is our academic assistant registrar. She is an amazing lady and someone that you guys if you get the opportunity to pop onto us on campus is a really friendly and person you can always go to and have a chat to or have a coffee in the canteen. Um, so next up on today's agenda is our access officer herself Mrs Jenny Burke. Hi Jenny how are you today? Jenny is going to talk to us and give us a little bit of an insight through a PowerPoint presentation. So if any of you have any questions about anything that Jenny is discussing in the presentation, make sure you put them in the chat box function. So Jenny, I'm going to hand over to you now and you can take the lead. Lovely, thank you. So I hope you can all see that there now. Um, and I'm going to start the, the presentation. My name is uh, Jenny Cooper Burke, and I am the Access Officer here in Athlone Institute of Technology. So very well warm welcome to everybody today. And thank you so much for giving up your time. So let's start by talking about what is the Access Programme. Well, the Access Programme is a part time course, and it's designed to give you a broad overview of different subjects. This will help you to decide which subjects you like, and ultimately it will help you decide which CAO course is for you. The course runs from Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. And the programme is ideally suited to people that left school early or adult learners that are now looking to return back into education. If you are over 22 years of age from the 1st of, Sept 1st of January 2021, then you do not need a leaving certificate to apply for this programme. If you are 21 years of age from the 1st of January 2021, then you would require a Leaving Cert or a major FETAC award. So let's have a little look about the academic side of this programme. Here on the slide, you'll see various different areas that you will study as part of your access programme. We've got engineering, business, hospitality, social studies and science. This one year access course will equip you with the necessary skills and knowledge to progress to third level education here with us in AIT. So the previous slide illustrated the academic side of the course, but what about the more personal side of the access program? On the slide, I'm just going to pause you there for two seconds. Would you just mind resharing your screen? I think we're just having a slight technical difficulty there. I'll just cut you across just for anybody no. who might be watching. Just give it a go again. Sometimes these things happen with Zoom. Everyone will understand. So don't panic. Just no. reshare that again. Is yeah, that we're perfect. Yeah, we no. have you now. <laughs> no Brilliant. problem at all. So here we can see the slide. Like I mentioned, this is more about what the personal side of the course can do for you. Um, the statements that you can see on the screen are actually have come from our students that have done the access course. 
So by working together with your lecturers and using the supports and the services available, you will learn how to study, how to give presentations, how to complete written assessments and examinations. Students freely acknowledge that this course gave them the skills and self-confidence they needed to progress their education. And we are lucky to have one of our students here today, Hayley, and she will chat to you about her experience in the Access course shortly. Now, so what can the Access programme do for you? As you can see there, on successful completion, graduates can gain entry to a range of AIT courses, whether that be a higher certificate, a degree for the following academic year. All applications for the CAO need to be submitted before the 1st of February. So in November, the Access Office will speak to the class about completing your, your application for the CAO. Students would normally have a fair idea at this stage of what course they want to pursue. And the Access Office is there to assist you whether it to be help complete the application form, or if you needed a bit of support or advice at this stage, we are here to give it to you. So this slide demonstrates the success we've had with the Access Programme. As you can see there, since it started in 2014, we've had 115 students complete the programme. 39 students went on to complete further programmes of study and graduated with awards, such as high certificates, degrees, honours degrees, and even master's programmes. So for this academic year, we currently have 45 students that are all registered on a variety of different programmes at different levels. And it all started, you know, with the Access programme. This really is your first step in your educational journey. Places are limited and the closing date is the 30th of May. So how do you apply? So if you go to the AIT website forward slash access, you will see the details for the access course and you can make your application there online. If you have any queries or questions at any time, you can always email us at access at AIT. So let's have a little look at the course content. Here are a few short notes that we asked the lecturers on the programme to put together. So it would give you an idea about the modules that you'd study. And we are lucky that we have one of those lecturers here with us today, Brian, who will talk to you about his subject shortly. As you can see, the course content is varied and it will give you an introduction into each area. One module that all the students find very helpful is the communications and study skills module. This helps students transition into third level education and this can be daunting, especially if it's been a little while since you've studied. You'll also notice that adult guidance forms part of the course content. I just wanted to give you a little idea of how the timetables work, just for your own schedule. As I mentioned, it runs from Monday to Friday, from nine until two. Uh, the odd occasion it might run past two, uh, but it just gives you an idea of how the modules are scheduled. And just a quick reminder here. So the closing date is the 30th of May. If you have any queries at all, the email address is there is on, is on the system on the screen, sorry, in front of you. I want to say a big thank you for attending today. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your, your normal day to join us. And the access office is here for you if you've got any queries at all. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. That was a wonderful presentation. And next, we are going to have a small presentation from Amelda, who is a student support worker here in AIT. Um, firstly, thank you to Jenny for a lovely presentation. And again, I'll reiterate, if anyone has any questions, pop them in the box and we'll discuss them in the Q&A session. So Amelda, I'm going to take, let you take the ropes now if you want to start sharing your screen. If we have any difficulties, we'll let you know. Yeah, perfect. You're good to go. Just unmute your mic there, Amelda. How's that? Perfect. Lovely. Right, good to go now. Hold Apologies for the hold up there. So as, uh, as mentioned there, I am one of my roles, I've introduced myself, I'm Imelda Wright, and one of my roles is student support worker. I'm also a lecturer with um, social studies, so I'm double jobbing. Um, I'm what's called a single point of contact. And the idea with that 
with that with that would be that students can come to me they can ask me a question and it kind of circumvents all of the running around that a student might have to do just to find out a simple answer so I can give some guidance direct students and um really let students know where the supports are within AIT and this is an essential kind of job it's especially when you're new to the college it helps tremendously the responses that I've had so far have been excellent and so many students have come back saying oh I've, I've sent people to you they asked me a question I didn't know but they sort of said Imelda would know hopefully that's the case on at times so um so it helps the students when they first come into college, but there's so many other supports that are available that are running throughout um, the, the entire, uh, not just through the semesters, but throughout the entire year. We have other people as well that students can link in with. And there's a there's a programme called PASS, Peer Assisted Student Support. So a PASS leader would have gone through the process or the courses and modules that um, they would work with subsequent students. So maybe if um, with the access course, a student who had completed last year's access programme will come into the class and arrange a weekly visit um, virtually, if that's the case. Um, and, and students can talk about anything, any issues they might have, the idea of having a past person is peer assisted student support is to have somebody who really quite recently has gone through that same process and understands what the students are going through themselves, has the knowledge, can give really good, valuable guidance and, and as I say, understands, can see it from that particular perspective. So there's all sorts of activities going on in the college and that's another thing that the past leader can help students link in with which is important. We also have as just um, you've heard a lot from Jenny there but Jenny is amazing support the as the access officer she deals with lots of different situations with students and gives an immeasurable amount of support for those students who engage with the access office itself. We also have a lot of um, tutors. Now, a tutor in AIT, um, there's no fee for use with um, and linking in with a tutor. So sometimes students find a particular aspect of a module a little bit more challenging. And in that case, um, the best advice would be to go and link in with one of the tutors. We have um, Emma Connolly. She's um, part of the Academic Writing Centre and helps students with the writing skills. And then we have um, Joe Keogh, and he, um, he tutors in maths, which is a lot of the, um, the, the, you know, the main issues is just actually talking them through with somebody. And then we have um, Brendan McClarney, he's in the business section and he would tutor on the business side of things. And also Ian, who's with us today, but Ian um, would tutor on the math side of things. So again, they're free of charge. It's maths, business, science and writing skills. And a lot of the issues can be, be uh, prevented or um, reduced if you link in quite early with the tutor supports within the college. Um, there's so much, so many supports, I really couldn't capture them all here in just a few slides. But one of the other very um, in, incredibly, um, there's so many apps, um, I'm losing my words, and I have so many different things can go through the library. It'd be well worth for saying to anybody to really get to know the AIT library on the run up to coming into the college and whilst you're in the early days because there is an immeasurable amount of supports available to all students. There's um, in particular faculty librarians and there's a, a dedicated librarian that would help students. You can email that librarian directly once you know who you're working with. The very fact that the access course so, covers so many different subjects that you may end up linking in with almost all of the faculty librarians and there's a huge resources available within the library itself. So that's it really from me. Thank you very much. And I'll hand you back to Claire. Thank you, Amelda. That was another wonderful presentation. If you want to stop sharing there, we'll go back to our um, next part of today's interactive okay. session, which is going to be a panel discussion. So for this panel discussion, I'm going to act as an MC and we're going to talk to a couple of members First that, for example, not only Jenny, but also Imelda have mentioned. So for this session, we are going to be joined and going to be introduced to Ian, Brian, and who was already mentioned previously, um, Hayley, who is an Access student. And um, they're all going to share their own personal stories and talk to you a little bit about, obviously, Hayley will talk about her own journey and how she found the last year. And obviously, Ian and Brian will talk a little bit about their role. And then we will move on to a Q&A session, a really great opportunity for you guys to find out a little bit more information if it's maybe from Hayley personally if you want to ask her a little bit of advice it's a really great opportunity to get your answer 
you know, get your question even answered right now here in person. Um, so I'm going to jump to Brian first. If you want to introduce yourself, Brian, give me a little bit of an insight and the people watching into your role and how you can basically help them through this program. Uh, thanks very much, Claire. Hello, no everybody. problem. Um, I just invite you here to talk about Matt's um, module in the Access course. So I've been teaching that now for the last four or five years. I'm also the Maths tutor. Um, it's not a job, but we'll talk about that in a second. But so one of the most common questions any student asks, or even it's Fred asks, what's the difference between this and the Leaving Cert? You may have had a bad experience with the Leaving Cert, it may be a long time ago since they've done the Leaving Cert. In a way, they're very different. I'm going to try and explain that as best I can. So the Leaving Cert, as you, if, you may, if, you're, if you can remember in maths, the teacher's under a lot of pressure to try and cover the subject, which is very broad. Um, the students are under pressure to get good marks. So then you're going to have stronger students and weaker students in the class. And the teacher then is going, because she's under so much pressure, he's under so much pressure, it's going to go with stronger students. And then the weaker ones are left behind. That's the complete opposite of what happens in the access course. The access course, what we try to do here is we try and tailor it, tailor it, tailor it um, meet your needs for when you go into first year in your chosen course, either engineering, science, or business, business studies. And being a math tutor, I have been access to that. These sort of questions are going to come up in science, engineering, and business studies. So anything you, you learn in access will be beneficial towards um, your first year in college. And I have two main rules in the class. The first rule is this. Everyone goes out the door with a smile. So it's I try to have, have a bit of crack, try to have a fun, fun learning zone. But I also, the second rule is I also make sure everyone learns. So people are worried about getting good marks in their exam, this, that, and the other. I'm worried about making sure that you have, you learn something, um, you're all tuned in, you ask plenty of questions, I want no one left behind. And I think Melda was talking about resources. And I actually mentioned the resources in terms of the Leaving Cert. When you when we read on the Leaving Cert, what do you call it? Um, if you fell behind in class, you would have had to go and look for a um, maths grind or whatever. And sometimes we didn't do that. In the college, we've got science tutors, and Ian, we've got academic writing shooters, got myself all free of charge. And in the maths class module itself, I also have a couple of other lectures on board, got John Hogan and Martina Nolan this year. And they're absolutely brilliant. You can ask them any questions. So ask plenty of questions, don't be left behind. So then the other question is, oh, I haven't been in school in 20 years or 30 years. That's not a problem. Or I am very weak at maths. Some people get very anxious about maths or afraid of maths. But um, I started the very basics. I remember, I think two or three years ago, I had a lad in the class, he said, Brian, I didn't do my leaving cert in 38 years. And I, he didn't even know what a calculator was. So for the first week, for example, we, we go through the basic concepts of maths and we show you basically how to use a scientific calculator. But make sure you don't go out and buy, Haley might comment on this, don't go out and buy a calculator just yet. Yeah, because I tell you the type of calculator to get in September. And it's, we don't ask you to buy anything too much. It's going to cost you between 10 and 13 euros by the calculator, okay? Um, what's going to say? Yes, so it's basically tailored. Yeah, so basically what you're saying is that you'll be there for students that I know even myself, or it's you're always kind of thinking the first thing, even when we're out in schools, is oh god, maths. Maths is always that thing that people go, oh no way, like I can't do maths, maths was my weak subject. But basically what you're saying there in, in a nutshell is don't panic. Firstly, is always my first bit of advice for any student coming across any modules that you might be worried about, is don't panic because not only are they going to be brought back from to the basics, which is so important and such a sense of security for students. And we'll obviously touch base with Haley about this as well. But knowing that you're going to be there for them every step of the way and you and your four students who may be like the one that you just gave an example there, didn't use a calculator, didn't know what a calculator was, that things like that are not something that should deter you from wanting to maybe pursue a dream or wanting to further your education or get into this course, that you're going to be there for them and support them right from the get-go, right from day one. But most importantly, you're going to have a laugh and you're going to have make memories and have a good time learning and learning something new every day. Definitely. Yeah, that's, okay. that's basically the most important. Brilliant. Um, Ian, I'm going to pop to you next if you want to give a little bit of an introduction into your role and then we're going to come to Hayley afterwards, if that's OK. Hi, Claire. Thanks very much. No problem. Yeah, it's it's 
it's a daunting experience coming to college. I know exactly what it's like. I took the non-linear path as well. Um, I was qualified as an architect, and then in the downturn in the economy, I had to wait and eventually completely reskill. So I went back to college from from the start again, and I started all over again. So a lot of the staff you'll find are very mindful of that, that you take the non-linear path, and that's okay. When I came to AIT first, I had come through a FETAC level five, not really knowing what I was going to do. Was I waiting for the building to pick up again or was I going to go further? And I ended up coming out with a, with a master's of toxicology funded by the EPA. So it can be done. Now, I had never done science since my junior cert or inter cert, and now I'm teaching it. <laughs> so it can be done. We're mindful that it's a broad course. There's there's engineering, there's a bit of humanities, there's science, obviously, and maths and engineering. So you can't be good at everything. Nobody's good at everything, you know. So that's where myself and um, Brian and Brendan and Emer come in and we pick up those little bits that you're not so good at or that you need an extra little bit of help with. So I'm the science tutor. I'm here to help with all the science stuff. There's no question that's stupid. There's... Uh, every year I know roughly what topic you're going to be coming to me with, you know, because it's the same questions each year. Um, so the only thing I'd say is we're not psychic. We don't know when you're, if you're in trouble. So you need to come and, and engage with us. And there's loads and loads of help there from everybody. Brilliant. And Ian, I think something that you mentioned there, where we might, I might pop back to it in the Q&A itself, but... Yeah. Coming from your own personal experience, maybe the viewers are watching might be maybe thinking the same thing there. You know, we're kind of in a similar situation for a certain construction, just to name one yeah. really good example over the last year has definitely been shot due to the pandemic. But maybe it's something similar that someone is maybe thinking that they would like to go back and maybe restructure and start something new. So maybe someone might have a question for you personally. Exactly. So and just to say this course is, is brilliant mm -hmm. for that because it's so broad. Mm -hmm. If you're coming back to college, you might not know what you want to do and yeah. oh, you sure I might be no good at science or I might be no good at engineering mm -hmm. and it's a great way to find out yeah brilliant Ian that was wonderful and we'll come back and ask you a couple of questions in the Q&A section which is next as I said but we'll just go to Hayley next if that's okay so hi Hayley how are you today hi, hi Claire I'm great good so Hayley I'm going to let you take the ropes for a minute and um, if anyone might watch seen you for example on our social channels over the last couple of weeks you came in and did a segment with us in the marketing department and spoke a little bit about your personal experience but just in case anybody didn't see it do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your journey and how you are where you are and where hopefully you're going in September yep Claire I will do so I'm Haley, and I started the access course in September and I left school in 2005 so, and I had a leave insert applied and I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do and I never had a real job and I have four kids. So um, I always wanted to do the access course, but I, I didn't think I was capable. And after 10 years or maybe ten, about 10 years of thinking about doing something, I applied and set my interview and got in and I've completed it now. And um, I'm just waiting on word back from the CEO about um, a quantity surveying degree course. So that's Brilliant. where I am now. Yeah. Brilliant. So Haley, I think what is so important for anybody watching this who might be even in similar footsteps to yourself, we might have other mammies watching who have kids, that there is so many opportunities. Firstly, is that I think the first thing is don't be nervous is the second thing. And jump in and go for it, I think is something that is really good advice from yourself. Um, and Haley, can I ask you a little bit about how you found the transition? So I know that that's something that people are really anxious about often, as you said, like you did your leave insert in 2005, like you, someone might be similar, someone might have been the early 2000s, they might have maybe done it a couple of years ago, but still that transition to coming back to education and going back into the classroom and going back to learning, how did you find that yourself? Or if anybody was watching, would you offer them any advice on maybe how you transitioned and what things you might have done that made the transition a little bit easier for you? I found it well, because I found it really good, Claire, because um, we were weaned into things. Like, as Brian said, the first week we were shown how to use the calculator. We were taught what academic writing was. We, we were weaned into the course for the first three months. And then after Christmas, then we got assignments that we had to do. And like we were given support along the way with them. And Brilliant. if I was to give advice, it would be to stick with your classmates and do study groups like we did on Zoom because of the mm -hmm. pandemic. Yeah. We did lots of that because we didn't have mm -hmm. interaction. 
and then um, we we used we took advantage of Brian and the, tut the tutor and so we did we used that mm -hmm. a lot and then um, yeah like and I just went in went in there thinking that I wanted to do social studies as I said and I opened my eyes up to what I could do because I didn't know mm -hmm. about all these other things beforehand yes. so like mm -hmm. I really think it's worth just just applying and seeing where it takes you because I didn't think this time last year that I would be waiting for a mm -hmm. CAO um, email for a quantity surveying degree I definitely didn't think that that yeah. this could be my life it's so exciting, Haley, and I think yeah. loads of things that you mentioned there is that you're taken through a stepping stone. As you said, like you weren't thrown in the deep end and in no. week two handed an assignment and you were going, oh no, like this is so overwhelming. You were brought through the whole process the first couple of months. And I think, for example, one thing that students can really take from yourself, Haley, is obviously this year was different than any other year. And you still find that the support was there, that you all of your classmates roped in together. You went on Zoom chats, you reached out to Brian, you reached out to Ian, you used every asset that you have, which obviously students hopefully, fingers crossed, in September and moving forward when we move back to maybe a little bit of a more normal life, they will have that in person. But it's still great to know that even when you didn't have that and we were in lockdowns and in level fives, that you still sp felt as supported as if you were sitting in the classroom and yeah, if totally. COVID never existed and you still felt like you could go and you could achieve for example as you said you never saw yourself maybe in QS and it's something that I know just being a girl talking on a girl to girl that maybe QS is something that often even kind of deters the construction sites and you kind of worry but knowing that this course opened up your eyes and it's something that you want to pursue now is really an incredible story and it's lovely to see how a year and over a nine month period your life can transform literally yeah Perfect. big changes Claire yeah big ch yeah. change is good though change is good change is yeah. always good and um, I think we're going to move to the Q&A segment if that's okay so everybody is everybody watching and um, everybody is going to be involved in this so we have a couple of questions from Jenny a couple of questions for Imelda, Ian, Brian and Hayley and um, so for our first question I think I'll come to you Jenny I think this is the most general question I know you kind of answered it in your presentation but it's also important to reiterate when we are talking about the access course who is this course really for to be honest with you it's for anybody if, if you really want to come back to education uh, and you just have like Haley described she just felt that she always wanted to do something but if you feel that this is your time then you know make an application and send it in if you're not sure you can give me a ring here in the access office or you can send me an email it really is open to anybody and if you want to learn and if you want to just you know expand the future um, you don't need to know exactly what you want to do you just have to know that you actually want to come and try and, and see where it brings you you have to be open to these new experiences. Definitely. Um, Sarah, I'm going to come to you next. I know that you, if you want to give a little introduction to yourself first, maybe, and um, let people watching who it is, I know that you're going to come on and talk to us in a couple of minutes, um, a little bit more, but I will let you introduce yourself first, and then I might come at you with a couple of questions. Well, thanks, Claire. So um, my name is Sarah Lacumber. I always say to people, just think of Cucumber, that's how you remember my name. Um, I'm the Student Resource Centre Manager, and I work with Jenny and Ian and Brian and all the people that you see here and really we're the scaffolding that are behind the scenes and um, here to help you when you need it and sometimes people sail through college and there's not a bother on them but life is life and we all know that things can get in the way as you go along your journey um, and it is very much a journey I, I loved hearing about Haley's journey she came in thinking she might be interested in social studies and is now embarking on the next steps towards being a quantity surveyor. I mean, wouldn't have put the two of them together, Haley. but there you go. Um, so uh, like, I suppose it's all about being open to opportunities. Um, and this is, the, this is the first step. The people here on this session today, they're opening themselves up to opportunities. And education is the single most transformative thing that anyone can ever do. It transcends social barriers, gender barriers, you name it, it's the one thing that can set you on a different path. So it's your opportunity, as Jenny was saying, to take time for you. Um, and it's just to taste your course. It's not going to be rocket science. You don't have to be Einstein to do this course. You'll be stepped into it. Haley was telling you they, they wean you in. You get support all along the way. You're not being hit hard with assignments from the get go. You're working up to that and there's supports to help you do that. Um, and if I could just mention as well, Claire, 
Oh, in terms of supports, and I know Imelda, you touched on some of the supports as well. Like we have tremendous people, qualified people to help you. The counselling service, second to none, a health centre, disability support service. So sometimes people might have been held back um, or, or even felt their self-esteem wise that they were held back from it, taking the next steps or they didn't have the belief in themselves or people in their family maybe hadn't gone down that road before of education. So people who have specific learning difficulties like dyslexia might have found second level difficult or maybe they weren't really understood or it was challenging or they, they came away feeling less than other people. This is your opportunity to get all the support you need to set you on the right road to doing a mainstream course. And maybe it's not for you at the end of the day, nothing ventured, nothing gained, but it's very much set at your pace. As Brian was saying, this is the opportunity for even the people who maybe didn't get a whole lot of attention or support in second level to get the support they need. And everybody is so very friendly. I hope people come away from this session today understanding how friendly and how supportive the whole crew are really. Brilliant. And Sarah, I'm going to come to you with a general kind of question that maybe students are wondering who are thinking of embarking on this new program in September. Obviously, it's a big step for them. But how tell me a little bit about induction. So obviously, induction is an amazing week and, you know, it's a great opportunity for to meet your friends and meet your classmates. Do you want to tell me a little bit more information about this and how this week can really start off a student's experience specifically? Well, getting off to a great start or a flying start is absolutely key. Um, but alongside that as well, Claire, we do know that the first two months are what we call the wobble months. So mm -hmm. they're the months where people are looking over their shoulder going, oh, she looks like she knows what she's doing or I don't think I'm up to it or I'm not smart enough. So we have supports embedded into those first eight weeks on coll in college on campus to help you throughout your time. So you'll get a pre um, entry induction where you're told about all the supports and I know uh, the session after this session people will be sent a brochure regarding the student supports and all the stuff that are there for people and um, so you'll be paced through that and then you'll be ready to hit the road running um, on you know the Monday of classes starting mm -hmm. but all the way through the first eight weeks we're supporting you all the way along and then we we're a little bit more in the background then after that we're there when you want to access the supports but as Ian was saying you have to come knocking we don't know if you're in trouble so you have to come come to the door and you'll see people mooching around the canteen everybody's so friendly doesn't matter if you don't know who's the right person to go to with this question you talk to somebody like Imelda she'll point you in the right direction or anyone at all your lecturers everybody wants you to succeed everybody's on your side Brilliant. Um, Sarah, that was a lovely introduction and it's great. I know that induction is such an exciting time for students and you get to meet all your classmates and everybody is nervous and you all have that nervous butterflies in your belly about that transition, but there's everybody's in the same place. So don't worry about that and you'll make friends with loads of people. AIT is such a warm, friendly campus. I know Sarah, you've mentioned the vast array of student supports available, but everybody in AIT is so friendly everybody's so approachable you can go to anybody with any question if you're lost someone will tell you where to go if they don't know where to tell you they tell someone so don't panic at all about that transition to campus and come back to education we will support you as much as possible and okay. um, so Brian I'm going to come to yourself next if that's okay with a couple of questions I know that we discussed about obviously maths and that scary maths and everyone is always like oh god maths but we won't panic about it because as you mentioned there and as Haley mentioned it's a step by step process and um, so do you want to talk to me a little bit about how does maths compare to the leaving search so I know for example if anybody in the last couple of years there was the change to project maths which was a little bit different again to your kind of classic mathematics your classic it was more project based and this that and the other so obviously if kind of students are applying who might be for example um, over 23 they will just have kind of just gone into the project math stage whereas kind of if for example you're coming back a couple of years later you'll obviously have done the classical even cert maths and um, but do you want to tell me a little bit about how it just compares um it's hard to kind of quantify exactly how we compare one another but um what i'm gonna say is um I actually thought about project maths myself but um if you take the leaving cert for instance so the leaving cert it's has, it's so broad so mm -hmm. it has so it, I'm just focusing on um, EIT specifically, okay? So I'm going to try and cover stuff that's going to be applicable to EIT. So some things we're actually going to cover more, it'll probably even more in depth than, say, um, ordinary level leaving cert maths. And other things then we might touch on as much because leaving cert is more broad, more stuff to cover, while I was tailored specifically towards the engineering maths, the science maths, and the business maths. But we start off much slower than we would in the leaving cert, okay? So... 
And I also have to remember the Leap Cert is a two-year program. So they're covering a lot more stuff. And project maths is a little bit different than the old type of Leap Cert maths, even the one I've done. But um, call it. don't be afraid. If you, if you found a hard school, definitely don't be afraid. Don't panic. But I, I want to say another couple of things too, very briefly before I get before I, before I go back to you. So we're all talking about the academic aspect of the course and everything. But the social aspect as well, and Haley might testify to this, and I've even chatted with people before, why oh, I'm coming back, just I don't care about social this, any other. Next thing, two weeks later, your best friends are everything in class. Social thing is so important, and at Lone, it's absolutely brilliant for that. Even the lecturers, there's no notions about them. You meet them, they'll chat you. Any question is not too big or too small. And the second thing I want to say is, you have a, you'll have an advantage on any for any people doing the lame cert in two years' time coming into college or next year coming into college. Because you know how to run the college, you know the library, you know about past exam papers, you know where the printing machine is. You'll be six months ahead of the leaving search students when you actually decide if you actually decide to do um, a four-year degree or cert certificate program. So hopefully that answers your question. Anything else, Claire? Sorry. Yeah, no, that was a brilliant answer. And I think that was really important as well, what you mentioned there. Obviously, the social side. So we all know that everybody can worry about the academics, but also you can be a little bit anxious about making new friends. And that transition is something that young or old, I think everybody is always nervous about. But as you said, you end up in this big family, like your class, no matter what group you go into, you're going to be a family, you're going to have each other's backs, you're going to want everybody to do well. And if someone, for example, is kind of struggling or falling behind, your classmates will rope in behind you and give you that support as well as the staff. But it's always nice to know that the people walking in the same shoes as you will support you and help you throughout the year and throughout your studies and the assignments and everything else that you need to do as a part of the program. Um, it's people you meet in that course, you, you wouldn't normally meet in mm -hmm. um, in different stages of your life, there's people who are different um, cultural backgrounds, different ages. It's absolutely brilliant. I do walk into the canteen now and see people who've done the next course four years ago. They're all in the canteen, still chatting with each other. And yet they're doing different courses now. They've made friends for life. So the social aspect is really important. So. Brilliant. Thank you, Brian. So, and Emelda, I'm going to talk to your... I'm going to... Sorry, did I cut in top of you there? No, you're going. I'm sorry, sorry. Go I'm going to pop to yourself first. Uh, next, sorry, not first, apologies. Um, you mentioned PASS in your presentation, Imelda. Do you want to talk a little bit more in detail on what PASS is for all of our viewers watching? Okay, thank you. Um, well, P PASS stands for Peer Assisted Student Support. So as I mentioned, and there's probably so too many supports to mention they really AIT is amazing for that and being a um, I studied at AIT myself but peer assisted student support relies on students um, coming forward to be trained so they will have been either themselves that have done the access course or they're in first year and they're helping other or they've gone on to second year and they've been trained and they're then helping the new intake of first years or new intake of access and so they work with um uh, they, they work with the student supports insofar as I think the term walking, you may have coined that Claire, sort of walking in someone's shoes, you've already, that person has already gone through the process of, of moving through an access course or moving through first year or second of college and they can use all of their experience um, to, to help the people who are coming up behind them and no more than the student support worker, you know, I can help in some ways to sort of lessen the burden for people. I, I'm not going to magically solve everything, but I can point someone in the right direction and save all of that wandering around and that frustration of not being able to move forward with something. The peer assisted students, um, student support does that too. It's, um, and it builds on that social network as well. It's in, as um, Brian mentioned, that it's really, really important to have those connections. And um, I can, I, again, I know it from myself going to college and AIT is such a friendly college that once you start making a few connections, said, or someone else will just sort of, you know, solve a problem for you because everybody realizes how, is, how important it is to communicate. And often then when people know something, they'll spread that around because as, um, as you say, it's, it's a lot of people have been on this journey. And I started college and um, initially when my first day at college in AIT, I was 45 years old when I went to college. I was an early school leaver and I arrived in the door and I was in one of the bigger um, theatres and I, it was almost like, I don't know what you, how you describe it. So many students came to me and they said, oh, are you our lecturer? I'm like, no. 
<laughs> because I was an old one, you know. But now I am the lecturer. And so it's kind of that strange full circle. But what I noticed about all of the students I was in first year with who had done the access course, they were streets ahead. Now, my gap from being an early school leader to returning was something like 30 years. So I was way behind with anything to do with academic writing or just, you know, understanding the run of things, computers. What are they? Um, but I noticed that with the access students back then, those that had gone through that course, that they were able to help others because they had that really, really the great foundation for it all. And the past um, leaders, they'll encourage everybody to sort of link in, help each other. And um, I think it's just slightly outside of the timetable, um, but it's well worth sort of linking into that and getting all of those additional supports. And someone earlier had said about, you know, you have to let people know where you're having any difficulty because nobody can understand that better than yourself. So be confident to ask for help because it's here and there may be so much more help and, and you just don't know about it so link in with everything and, and obviously the past leaders will help you find all of those different things as will everybody else in, in the students and um, the support anybody um, mentioned there about all lecturers you know there's lecturers there's students when I was students and now they're lecturers in AIT so this was a journey I never imagined would take me down this particular road. So, and like Haley's story, it's really heartwarming. It's really just another, um, I think it's an accolade for AIT as well to show that that's possible on a, on a course that um, doesn't cost the students anything. You know, that you can come in and you can have that huge stepping stone. It's a leap really it takes you on, but it's in small increments and can take you to a degree, a master's, even a PhD, who knows. Is that okay for you, Claire? Rambling Lovely, on. Imelda. That was absolutely wonderful. Um, Hayley, I'm going to come to you um, after I just pop one question to Ian that I think is something that you can kind of rope in behind a little bit. Um, so, Ian, I'm just going to ask you, will you just talk to our viewers a little bit about assessments? So that's obviously another part of the transition that students might be a little bit worried about. As Hayley said, that in the first couple of months, you really are weaned in and then you kind of get your assignments after that. But you want to talk to me a little bit about how students are actually assessed? Is it, you know, MCQs, essays? Just talk a little bit more in detail on how the students will actually be assessed across the board, basically. Yeah, absolutely. So assessments, assessments have to be done. They're a natural part of college. You know, you, you have to be assessed in some way. And the whole thing is to make it as painless as possible. So they're either going to be continuous assessment or an exam. OK, they're split between those two things. If they're continuous assessment, it's going to be multiple choice quizzes. It's going to be presentations. It's going to be small tests in class. And you accumulate those marks up, maybe 2% here, 5% there, 10% there. And by the end of the year, you're sitting on a little pot of marks that you're going into your exam with some marks already in the bag. So you're not going in with zero. OK, the mm -hmm. other thing I'd say with assessments is the, the key rule to or the key tip I'd give for people with exams. Anybody that's worried about exams, never go into an exam not knowing what you're going to be asked. And that sounds strange because you never see the questions. But with, if you go through the topics, you go through the past exam papers which are available to you and you just tick off on your notes. Oh, I need to know this. I need to know this. I need to know that. And you have the list of exam paper. You know what you're going to be asked. There are no surprises. There's nobody trying to catch you out. What we'd like to see is 100% pass rate. That's what we want. And that's why the tutors, Brian, myself and Brendan and, and Emer are here. We don't go with the fastest ones in the class. So if you're sitting on a high merit and you're looking for a distinction, I'm not really going to focus on you in a tutorial. I want to make sure everybody gets over the 40%. I'm there to bring the people to make sure everybody gets through and that can i'll lead that in terms of looking at past exam papers and i'll do sample exam questions with people all the way through the year brilliant ian i think something you mentioned there is such a sense of security for students as well and Haley, you might be able to talk to me a little bit about this about your own personal journey but continuous assessment can be such a bonus because you can basically sometimes go into exams with for example 30 percent or whatever it might be a different module is a different amount of percent but it really gives you that sense of security that you've given your best the whole way through the semester you've tried really hard in the mcqs as ian mentioned in the presentations and you know that you've given it your best shot and you can give it your best shot in the exam and hopefully you will come out with the same outcome and um, Haley, do you want to talk to me a little bit about how you found the assessments and maybe 
maybe specifically from your own personal view, like about the continuous assessments, what did you make of the presentations or the essays or the exams? Just talk to me a little bit about your personal experience. Um, the first presentation I did was great. We got to do it on any subject. So I got to do it on cats. Uh, we were advised to pick a subject and use nice visuals. It was really good. Um, it was a bit nerve wracking, but I um, got through it. And then I had to do a more serious one then on what I wanted to do next year. So it prepared me for that. And we done lots of essays, which was it was really interesting. We had to study some documentaries and write about them. You know, we were we were given um, good assessments and with the maths as well, we were given time with them. So we were, and um, as I said, we done Zoom sessions and the, the maths, I suppose, um, we were we were given um, we were given questions and we were given okay. like two weeks to go off and do them. And we 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 studied and got got it done. It was it was really good, positive experience. Brilliant. And Haley, I just think I'm just going to ask you one kind of final advice um, for what people who might be watching um, in relation to how did you kind of divvy out your time? Do you know? I think that's really important if there's someone like a mammy like yourself, as you just mentioned at the beginning, who might be thinking to yourself, of themselves, oh, God, how does that lady do it? She is inspiring. Like I'm sitting here going, you are amazing. Well done. I wouldn't be able. But I know that you clearly are able do you know so do you want to talk to someone who might be in that position right now looking at you going I have three kids or four kids how did you do it basically um I'm lucky my kids go to school and the course is nine to two so I was blessed in that sense and I suppose with the homework I had to wait until the kids were in bed and do get stuff done on the house and um I suppose I just I just made sure to give an hour every evening to mm -hmm. my college work and to study and it really did help me get mm -hmm. ahead so I, I just made sure to give 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 a little bit of time to each subject so brilliant. I did well yeah that's yeah. actually brilliant advice Hayley for to say like a little bit goes a long way so you know for example yes. if someone in your shoes if they do have kids in school that there is that flexibility with the timetable it makes it very achievable for you as students to for example make the time but also in the evening then that you sit down and be like okay this hour is my hour to do my study on my engineering or my maths or whatever subject it might be. And it makes you kind of feel proud of your accomplishments. And it is amazing. You should be very proud of your accomplishments and obviously best of luck with the future. And just are you looking forward to the future? Are you looking forward to kind of pursuing into QS? And talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, Claire, I can't wait. Um, it's really exciting. Like, you know, I never thought this would be me going in to do my mm -hmm. degree course. Um, yeah, just super exciting times. I'm doing so much research about it. I didn't know about this um, field. I didn't know anything mm -hmm. about it until I went into the access course. And I feel like it's my purpose. And I never felt this way. I didn't right. know. And being in DIT, I feel like I, I'm where I'm meant to belong for the first mm. time in a long time. I never that even is... felt this in school. That's, cool. that's lovely. That's honestly yeah. so heartwarming for everybody watching. And if you want any advice, um, I definitely advise watching Room to Improve and you can watch the lady in Room to Improve and be her. That's who I always wanted to be. I know I'm obviously not a QS, but she yeah. is the dream. Like you can just, that can be your goal. Work for Derma Bannon. That can be the goal. <laughs> Um, so Jenny, I'm just going to come to yourself last for a little bit of advice before we kind of do the close in peace. Do you have any kind of final words that you would like to say to anybody watching or just your maybe advice for viewers and obviously who might be thinking of making that step like Hayley did last year? Um, yeah, no, I just like to, um, probably I suppose repeating what I said earlier, but it's just if you really feel and I, I do find from talking to a lot of students that they've had these thoughts for a long time. That they've been thinking about coming back to education and then the self-doubt creeps in oh it's not for me I wouldn't be able oh I just can't devote the time or you know and coming back into uh, a TU um, as we're going to be soon coming into the campus it can be very very scary you know and I don't think it matters whether you're in your 20s your 30s your 40s or your 50s if if to come back onto the campus or to make that first phone call or to send that email, it's a starting point, even if it's just to get information. If you just want to get your information together, then have a think about it or, or ring and say, have a, have a chat with me. Because I think if you kind of have that little bit of burning ambition inside of you, it doesn't seem to go away no matter what age you get. As you go through the phases, it's still there niggling away. So what I'd say is embrace it and see where it brings you because just, just to give this a start, you don't know where it's going to bring you. I mean, Haley's story, is truly inspirational and you know for an awful lot of people on access it's just given them that first step in their educational journey as I mentioned on my slide just just it can open so many doors and it builds confidence um, and it builds key skills that 
even if you don't decide after doing the access, you, you maybe decide you're not ready to go to a further education course, that's fine. The skills you learn in access, like how to present, how to speak to people, um, the career guidance, that will help you towards gaining employment. It, it will help you in so many different ways. So, you know, whatever you want the access for, course for, just give it a go and make an application. That's it. Lovely, Jenny. That was a lovely piece of advice. And Sarah, I'm going to come to you finally to give a few closing remarks and even maybe a little bit of advice for yourself, probably yourself, pardon me. I could do with all the advice I can get, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> um, so feel free to get in touch with your advice. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I suppose... When you're looking at, at making a big decision, um, often people look at, try to find the reasons why, why they shouldn't do something. You know, oh, I'm not smart enough, or oh, I don't have the time, or my kids need me to do this, or my, my partner needs me to do the other, or um, I should be going out trying to find a job, never mind to get educated. Um, but I, I'd like to encourage people to think of the reasons why you should. And here are some of them. You have staff who are waiting to help you, people who recognize how brave you need to be to make this step, people who have helped other people like Hayley, like her classmates along the way, people who have been in your shoes themselves, who have come back, changed careers, come back into education after long gaps, and who have seen the benefits of that. Um, and you have people who know for a fact how much of a difference this education can make to your life for a life less ordinary, scratch the itch whether you're 25, 35, 65, 75, and um, that itch won't go away and you don't want to have any regrets. This is your opportunity to check it out. And what's the worst thing that could happen? You're just opening yourself up to possibility. Um, it's free. You're supported all the way through. It's balanced in such a way that you can get it done in small chunks, like Hayley described the fact that her kids were in school nine to two. And it's no accident that the course runs nine to two, Hayley. It's because we know that people might have kids in school nine to two. So there's an opportunity for you. Now you have to be organized like Hayley has been. She waited until the kids were gone to bed and her housework done before she did her British study, but you can do it. And it's amazing how you'll slip into a routine and there's supports and help to coach you around that. So I would say, this is your opportunity for you. Don't let you hold you back or anyone else hold you back. Take the chance because you won't regret it. Definitely, Sarah, that was an absolutely lovely closing piece. And I think something you mentioned there again, which is really important for our viewers or people watching it back, is that the hours are so flexible and it makes it so achievable for everybody and anybody. And that is, as you said, why they are those specific hours. So I think that was a wonderful mention as well. People should talk to if they're in receipt of social welfare payments as well. My understanding is that you can still continue to re receive your social welfare payments while you're doing the course. So it won't stop you with that financially. Um, and that's another enabling factor as well. Excellent. Yeah, that's also a really important piece for our viewers or people watching it back. Um, so thank you to our whole panel today. So I'm going to thank Jenny, Hayley, Ian, Amelda, Sarah and Brian for joining us on this really important and really informative interactive um, access session. So thank you all for joining me today. And I just would like to reiterate to anybody watching that you will all, for example, get your access pack via email. But if anybody has any queries, you can email Jenny. I let her give her email details now and we can put you in touch with anybody that you might require. Hi there. Yeah, if anybody wants to email me, my email address here is access at AIT.ie. Please feel free to get in touch. Brilliant. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And I hope you have a lovely day and best of luck with your futures. Thank you. Mm -hmm.